Item number SCP-2207 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-2207 is to be contained in a small cardboard box filled with foam within a standard safe class storage locker. When not used for testing, all testing with SCP-2207 is to be done in Containment Laboratory 8803. After testing, Containment Laboratory 8803 is to be decontaminated and checked for damage. No longer applicable. As of Test 42, exploration by D-Class and all Foundation personnel beyond SCP-22071 instances are promptly denied. Update. As of Incident-22071, all tests involving SCP-2207 are to be suspended. Description. SCP-2207 is a beep brand disposable plastic knife. Testing has indicated that outside of SCP-2207's anomalous properties, it is identical to other non-anomalous disposable plastic knives. When the cutting edge of SCP-2207 reaches a minimum speed of 6 meters per second relative to immediate surroundings, it severs local space-time, creating a rift that connects to a random alternate universe. These rifts are designated as SCP-2207-1. Instances of SCP-2207-1 typically last approximately 5 minutes without outside intervention, and the length is equal to the distance that SCP-2207 traveled at, or above 6 meters per second. Instances remain stationary after creation, but may be widened by pulling along the edges. Instances may be kept artificially open for a maximum of 24 hours by placing any material across the instance's threshold. After 24 hours, the SCP-22071 instance closes, severing any materials crossing the threshold. Exploration Log the following is a partial abridged exploration log. See document 220724 for a full log of tests, explorations, and recovered material from SCP-22071 instances. In all tests, a mechanical arm was used to create SCP-22071 instances, and the SCP-22071 instance was propped open by a set of metal braces. It has been later determined that at least three other alternate realities accessed by different SCPs, including SCP-1165, may be the result of prior testing with SCP-2207. Date, 19 beep, June 12th. Test number 10. Exploration number 1. Type, D-Class only. Equipped with standard recovery harness and cable. Radio video umbilical, and level C PPE. Test time, 24 hours. Overview. The breach point of Universe 10 is in a hallway with white halls, fluorescent lighting, and tiled floor. A set of double doors is on the opposite side. D-22071 does not report any unusual sensations upon breaching the SCP-22071 instance and is instructed to pass through the double doors. One minute into the test, D-22071 reports that he is no closer to the doors than when he started. Video confirms this. However, 84 meters of recovery cable and umbilical has been fed through the SCP-22071 instance, and visual inspection from outside the instance indicates that D-22071 has walked halfway through the hallway. D-22071 is instructed to keep moving forward and complies despite mild protest. After two more minutes, D-22071 reports that he is still no closer to the doors. Video confirms this, and an additional 168 meters of cable and umbilical has been fed through the SCP-22071 instance. 
visual inspection from the outside of the SCP-220701 instance indicate that D-22071 has still not moved more than halfway through the hallway. At this point, D-22071 is recalled. From the outside of the SCP-22071 instance, D-22071 is seen to turn around. D-22071 reports that the SCP-22071 instance is much further, with video indicating a distance of approximately 250 meters. D-22071 runs towards the SCP-22071 instance, while the record cable is activated, D-22071 is visibly seen to run in place from the exterior of the SCP-22071 instance. 252 meters of recovery cable has been recalled after 30 seconds, filling the spool. Research personnel begin to physically pull on the recovery cable, trying to manually recall D-22071. D-2071 reports that he is no closer than before to the SCP-22071 instance. Three minutes and thirty seconds into the test, D-22071 is instructed to stop moving, and given the explanation that technical difficulties compounded by his movements are hampering recovery efforts. An additional 108 meters of recovery cable and video umbilical is finally caught over the next 30 seconds, with researchers noting that they don't feel any additional weight on the other end. Video and observation from the SCP-22071 instance indicates that D-22071 looks behind him. Video shows that the double doors appear to be much further behind him than before and D-22071 begins to run towards the SCP-22071 instance. Ten hours into the test, D-22071 has largely stopped his attempts at self-recovery. During this period of time, D-22071 was seen to alternate between running, walking, jogging, and sobbing. Exploration ends after a period of 24 hours, due to the forced closure of the SCP-22071 instance. Metal braces, the recovery cable, and the radio video umbilical were severed. D-22071 is not recovered. An additional beat meters of recovery cable and radio video umbilical were recovered. Examination of the recovered cable and umbilical indicate no deviances from foundation standard apart from the anonymously added length. Date, 19 beep, June 27th. Test number 25, exploration number 15. Type, D class only, equipped with EEG cap. Note, EEG sensors were added to exploration protocols after the events of test 18. See document 220724 for more information. Standard recovery harness and cable Radio video umbilical and level C PPE. Test time 16 minutes 32 seconds. Overview The breach point of Universe 25 is a small alley of a large unnamed city. D22077 reports a sensation of vertigo upon breaching the SCP 22071 instance. During the immediate stages of exploration, materials are recovered, mostly refuse, and D-2207 reports three additional vertical-like sensations, and an occasional stare from inhabitants of Universe 25. The latter is determined not to be a breach of exploration protocols, as D-22077 is stressed in level C PPE. At approximately 8 minutes and 20 seconds into the test, D-22077 reports a fifth sensation of vertigo, and levels of ambient light begin to notably diminish. D-22077 looks up without being directed towards the sun. The sun appears to be undergoing a solar eclipse. However, the occluding object does not pass over the sun, but instead appears to originate from the center of the sun. 
After 1 minute and 30 seconds, the unknown object has fully occluded the sun, including the corona. D-22077 is ordered to come back, but is unable to, as the unknown occluding object appears to attract objects on the ground. Video indicates D-22077, as well as other individuals, vehicles, and other objects were lifted into the air, moving towards the unknown occluding object. The attracting force does not extend past the SCP-22071 instance. There is no meaningful communication from D-22077 during this period of time. The recall cable is activated and D-22077 is recovered within one minute. The metal braces propping the SCP-22071 instance is removed and the instance is allowed to close naturally. Date 19 Beep July 10th Test number 38 Exploration number 28 Type D class only, equipped with EEG cap, standard recovery harness and cable, radio video umbilical, and level C PPE. Test time 2 hours 38 minutes 18 seconds. Overview The breach point of Universe 38 appears to be in a farmland, currently growing a crop visually similar to Z maize subspecies maize. Maze or corn. D-220714 begins limited recovery of crop samples. After one hour, D-220714 returns with gathered samples and passes through the SCP-22071 instance. Research personnel note that all samples are of low quality, heavily blighted and easily destroyed by light handling. D-220714 claims that none of the samples she recovered were blighted when questioned. Review of video confirms D-220714's account. D-220714 is sent to recover new samples from Universe 38 after being equipped with 24 resealable biosafe sample bags. Upon breaching the SCP-22071 instance at 1 hour and 30 minutes into the test, she reports that all plant life within 2 meters of the SCP-22071 instance have withered. Video and observation from SCP-22071 confirms this. D-220714 notes that wind speed is increasing and discovers a structure similar to a barn at a two-hour mark. She is instructed to go inside. The interior of the barn-like structure does not significantly differ from barns and working farms, being used for storage for a variety of tools and packaged plant matter visually similar to hay. D-220714 is instructed to gather samples of the hay-like matter and two easily carried tools. D-220714 travels to the upper floor of the barn-like structure and approaches a window. The location of the breach point of Universe 38 is visible due to the withered plant surrounding the instance. Observation indicates that the wind is rapidly spreading the withering or blighting effect. D-220714 reports that she hears a noise from a lower level of the barn-like structure and investigates. A male individual, wearing blue overalls, a grey t-shirt, a hat made of a straw-like material, and carrying a rifle of unknown make and model, is seen inspecting the recovery cable and radio video umbilical. D-220714 is instructed to switch her radio to free-range mode and to press the quick release button on the recovery harness. D-220714 complies and is instructed to leave the barn-like structure and return to the SCP-22071 instance. Psych Beep's armed contained response unit is called to contain Laboratory 8803 as a precautionary measure. At 2 hours and 23 minutes, D-220714 reports that she has left the barn, but the individual from the barn had spotted her and started firing his rifle. Gunshots and yelling in an unknown language can be heard over the radio. The recall cable is activated. 
D-22714 reaches the SCP-22071 instance at 2 hours and 30 minutes into the exploration. The unknown individual is seen entering the weathered blighted area and falls to the ground before Psych Beep's armed containment response unit can fire. The individual's body is subsequently seen to rapidly mummify. D-220714 is instructed to recover the unknown individual's body, and the inventory complies. The instance is allowed to naturally close. The second set of recovered samples do not show signs of the blighting effect that the first had. The unknown individual was found to be carrying identification in a wallet, along with several samples of paper currency and a set of photos, presumably of family members. All information in the wallet is, is an unknown and currently undeciphered script. The recovered tools were determined to be functionally identical to a dulled hand scythe and hacksaw. D-220714 died shortly after the test, mummifying 13 minutes after the exploration, likely due to the blighting effect. The effect was found to not be communicable from D-220714's body, the body of the unknown individual from Universe 38, or any recovered material. Date, 19 Beep, July 14th, Test Number 42, Exploration Number 32. Type, D-Class Only, equipped with EEG cap, standard recovery harness and cable, radio video umbilical, and level C PPE. Test time, 24 hours. Overview. The breach point of Universe 42 is a grassy field with the skyline of an unknown city visible approximately 2 to 3 kilometers away from the breach point. D-220716 is instructed to pass through the SCP-22071 instance. D-220716 is seen to breach SCP-22071 and subsequently appears to freeze in place once fully through. Video feed is still operational and requests to ascertain D-220716 status are unanswered. EEG shows a sudden increase of alpha brainwave activity. The recall cable is activated after 30 seconds. The recall cable snaps at the SCP-22071 instance, also severing the radio video umbilical. Visual observation from the SCP-22071 instance shows that the umbilical and recall cable beyond the threshold remain slack. Recovery attempts are made with a variety of tools, including hooked poles. However, all attempts fail in a similar manner to the recall table, with objects quickly becoming stuck after exposure to environment beyond the SCP-22071 instance, it is also discovered that the metal braces remain immobile. Exploration ends after a period of 24 hours due to the forced closure of the SCP-22071 instance. Metal braces and all tools used in the recovery attempt are severed. D-220716 is not recovered. Note. Due to your attrition rate of D-Class and near certainty of hostile and or dangerous conditions beyond SCP-22071 instances, remote control drones with audio-visual feedback are to be used for all further tests involving SCP-2207. Date, 19 Beep, July 28th, Test Number 56, Exploration Number 46, Type Remote control drone with audio video feedback. Test time 35 minutes 45 seconds. Overview The breach point of Universe 56 appears to be within a row or small suburb outside of a large city. The drone is deployed. Within one minute, the skyscrapers of the city are seen to sag, causing a mild panic from individuals within the suburb. The sagging becomes more defined. As the exploration continues, by three minutes, the skyscrapers appear to begin melting, and the sagging effect is now seen on the houses of the suburb. The sagging effect passes to individuals after five minutes. By ten minutes, 
Almost all visible objects have turned to puddles, and the controller of the drone notes difficulty in controlling the drone. After 15 minutes, the drone becomes unresponsive to controls and falls to the ground. A second drone is deployed, while video data is still received from the first, which progressively distorts as the exploration goes on. After 25 minutes, the controller of the second drone reports difficulties with the drone's movement. The second drone is recalled as no significant new data was recovered. The metal braces are removed, and the SCP-22071 instance is allowed to close. Inspection of the second drone shows that all load-bearing surfaces are heavily warped with sagging effects on the remaining surfaces. The side of the metal braces exposed to Unit 56 are also found to be warped. Strength and compression tests indicate that the affected material does not deviate from non-affected material. Date 19 beep October 6 Test number 126 Exploration number 116 Type Remote Control Drone with Audio Video Feedback Test time 1 hour, 21 minutes, 36 seconds. Overview The breach point of Universe 126 is gladed in a temperate forest. During the day, the drone is deployed and occasional faint jacket lines are seen in the ground, sky, and air. The lines appear to be harmless to the drone. After 3 minutes, the lines are distinct enough to continuously observe with the highest concentration forming around the SCP-22071 instance. After 10 minutes, sections of the sky are rendered to blue with the phrase no signal visible in white. Visual observation from the SCP-22071 instance indicates that the sections appear black. By 20 minutes, the entire sky is rendered in blue with the phrase no signal in white. Sunlight is still visible though without an apparent source. Forty minutes into the exploration, sections of the ground are rendered in blue with the phrase no signal visible in white. One of these sections appears under a tree, which subsequently falls. The tree is not visible as it passes into the no signal patch. One hour into the exploration, the no signal patches began to form in the air with the ones on the ground expanding and new ones forming. After an hour and 15 minutes, the drone is recalled as the no signal patches make further exploration difficult. The controller is unable to successfully navigate the drone back, causing it to become disabled and fall to the ground. Two minutes later, a no signal patch forms on the ground beneath the drone, and contact is subsequently lost. The metal braces are removed from the SCP-22071 instance and is allowed to naturally close. Incident 22071 On 19 Beep, October 6 The following letter was found addressed to Site Beep's administration. To whom it may concern, it has come to the attention of Beep that multiple recent episodes surveillance events were tied to actions performed by your organization, the SCP Foundation, as Universe 8D57FE2 Eta D. The universe the organization inhabits has displayed limited multiversal travel capability prior to these incidents. It is believed that the actions performed by your organization are both without malice or full knowledge of the resulting repercussions. This correspondence is therefore considered to be a lawful cease and desist order by BEEP. Further actions on your organization's part that contribute to an episode surveillance event will result in one or more of the following. Official Sensor of Universe 8D57FE2 Eta D and its inhabitants finds upwards of 87 million thetas per episode surveillance event Minimum imprisonment of 3,000 stellar cycles per retro surveillance event. Intervention by Beep Armed Forces. First retro surveillance event of Universe 8D57FE2 Eta D. 
For your convenience, attached is a list of dates and times when registered surveillance events have been detected. Please be sure to refer to the list so that you may comply with this lawful order. We thank you for your cooperation. Signed, Sigma Toxin, Office of Multiversal Incidents. After receiving the letter, all testing was halted in response. As of 2015, August 3rd, there has been no further correspondence from the entity Sigma Toxin or BEEP.